Hi, I'm Allison for Leading Edge Dog Show Academy, and I am here today with our equipment series. And today we are going to talk about specialty brushes. So what are specialty brushes? Well, you might wanna check out our other videos on slicker brushes or on pin brushes. And if you don't think one of those is right for you, then we are in the right spot. So we're gonna kind of talk about a lot of those miscellaneous type brushes, we could call them, um, but here we go. So quick little recap, um, brushes can be the same kind of brush, i.e. a bristle brush, a pin brush, or a slicker brush, and be very, very different shape-wise or color-wise. So we don't look at shape and color when deciding what kind of brush that actually is. So for example, this is a pin brush. We know that because the pins are straight, right? And this is a slicker brush, and we don't know that by the shape or the color. We know that because the pins are bent, right? They go straight up, then they have a bend. So pin brushes um, are a great workhorse brush. Slicker brushes are great for like really densely coated curly type dogs. And then now we are going to move on to specialty brushes. So um, I'm going to start really with um, some of the specialty brushes that might just be your dog's everyday brush. So let, that's a bristle brush. So bristle brushes, um, they can have natural fibers. Um, like boar bristle or a goat bristle are very common, or they can have man-made fibers, like uh, often they can be nylon or synthetic boar, something like that. And a lot of times we are going to use these bristle brushes on our smooth coated dogs. So think of a French bulldog, think of a boxer, a pointer, um, something with that very smooth coat. Um, and I'm not really thinking of a dog that has kind of that thicker double smooth coat. So I'm not thinking of like a Belgian Malinois or a German Shepherd or something that just has that kind of thicker coat. I'm thinking more of just those dogs that have that very, very thin single coat, smooth coat laying flat to the body. So um, a, one of the questions that I get asked first is what's the difference between a tufted brush and a non tufted brush? So if you look at this brush. So this is a Mason Pearson type brush and it has both natural boar bristle and these longer nylon pins. Um, but you can see how the bristles are grouped together. So these are called tufted brushes and then brushes where it looks like more like a solid, like there's not a lot of space between the bristles. These are called non tufted. Um, even though I get this question asked of me quite a bit, to me, it doesn't make a big difference in the overall functionality of the brush. So it's kind of personal preference at that point. So let's talk about bristle brushes. So um, I like to use a um, bristle brush on my smooth coated dogs. And this one has some brass pins in the middle, which make it ionic. It has ionic properties. And I find that that does a really good job of really like scooping that dirt and dander out of my smooth coated dogs. I do think smooth coated dogs still need to be bathed once a week. I do think they need to be brushed um, at least once a week, right? So this is a great brush. Um, it's natural bore. It's a good size. The bore is nice and straight and the ionic charge in the middle just makes it do like a really, really great job. So another brush, this is nylon. So these purple bristles are nylon. They're not natural. Again, it has this brass in the middle. So it's also ionic. Um, this is a great brush again for those smooth coated dogs. But if you're a groomer that's in competition and you need a brush that really marcells the coat. So think of a dog like a Kerry Blue Terrier, a soft coated Wheaton, a Portuguese water dog, where you really want to put that wave into the coat. This brush will also do a fantastic job of that. Now, when we move on to this more traditional, like maybe Mason T Pearson type brush that has the nylon and the boar bristle, I like this for our like rustic coated, long coated dogs. And you're like, what the heck do you mean by that? So I'm thinking about like a Sky Terrier, a Bearded Collie, a Polish Lowland Sheepdog, one of those breeds where you want that coat is harder, denser, has more texture than like a Maltese or a Shih Tzu. So kind of that, those dogs that are out there in the wet doing a job, those kind of coats, this is a fantastic brush for those. Um, because it has this nylon bit of a longer, it might not be the best choice for like those super smooth coated dogs like the Frenchie um, or a Boxer. Now moving on to some other specialty brushes that maybe aren't 
um, bristle brushes, we have the wooden pin brush. So the wooden pin brush looks like a regular pin brush to me, um, nice straight pins, but these pins are made of wood. So why is this fantastic? Again, this is another decent choice for those rustic coated, longer coated dogs. But where I really like this brush and where I really think it fits into this specialty category is I love it for puppies because it's just such a great, it's so gentle on your skin, on their skin, more importantly, that your dog actually loves it. It feels like a massage. So it's great for puppies. It's great for dogs that have been rescued that were maybe haven't been groomed and they're older or were groomed but improperly and have fear of grooming or any dog that you have that has a fear of grooming, doesn't like the feel of the brush, the wooden pin brush is absolutely fantastic. Obviously we all have a soft spot for those elderly dogs and they're just a little bit more sensitive. A lot of them can have skin sensitivities by the time they get older. So any dog of any age that has a skin sensitivity and or just plain old elderly and you just wanna be super gentle but still make sure they're getting groomed properly, I absolutely adore this wooden pin brush. And then one of our last, um, specialty brushes is this ice slip brush. Again, it's basically a pin type brush. It has these nice straight pins, but if you look really closely or just take my word for it, these pins are fat and chunky and very, very round ground and kind of in this brush in a dense pad, right? Like there's not a lot of flexibility. So this brush is great for dematting, right? So if you have a dog um, that has a lot of matting behind its ears or anywhere on its body, maybe you have a poodle, a Bichon, going through a coat change and you really wanna break up that coat without losing the coat or irritating the skin. This is called an ice slip brush. And this is absolutely fantastic for dematting. So here are some of the specialty brushes. Some of the other specialty brushes that we, that we haven't mentioned today are, you might see a bristle brush that has a very small round head. So a lot of those are used for chalking your dog. So if you're at a dog show and you need something to either apply white chalk and or colored chalk to your dog, um, that is another brush that would fall into that kind of specialty brush category. Um, also, we have some slickers that have special shapes to them. So maybe they're teeny tiny, they have a triangular shape. I mean, I consider those slicker brushes, but if you thought that that was a specialty brush, that could also be included in this category. So a little recap is if I have a very, very smooth coated dog, so we're talking that single coat, smooth coated dog where the coat is laying flat to the body, I am going to reach for one of these bristle brushes, right? So whether it's nylon or natural bore, they both do a fantastic job. Actually, this brush is actually just recently taken off in the equine industry. So think of like that really tight fitting horse coat. That's the kind of brush where I'm going to use this. Um, again, a tufted brush, it kind of has these two different lengths. I'm going to use these more on my thicker smooth coated dog. So think Belgian Malinois, German Shepherd, but very, very useful on our rustic coated, long coated dogs, bearded collies, sky terriers, and the such. This is great. This is, could also be a great brush um, for, you know, maybe an elderly Maltese or something where you don't want to use a pin brush. Some people like this, obviously you would get the smaller size because just like any other brush, the bigger the dog, the bigger the brush and the smaller the dog, the smaller the brush you want to use. So the next time you're actually wondering what a specialty brush is, this is a good sampling of specialty brushes. This isn't all the specialty brushes that are out there, but these are the most common types. So if you need any help picking a brush, please just let us know and we are more than happy to help you. So I hope that helps. Hi guys. Thanks for joining us on another video in our equipment series. Like we said, there is a lot of equipment here that we need to cover. So if we haven't yet hit the piece of equipment that you're yearning to learn about, let us know in the comments below and we will add it to our very next one. As well, don't forget to like and subscribe because then you won't miss out on a video that maybe you've requested or something that you want to know about. Um, we are always here for you to answer any of your questions about these or any other products, any other thing that you need to know to take great care of your dog, whether you're in the salon, going to a dog show, or just trying to get your dog groomed at home in the easiest and most efficient way possible. So thanks again for joining us in our equipment series.